been four or five years since we've been in Russia, and we're very happy to uh, come back. So thank you, Lev, uh, for bringing us uh, back to the market. This is a very big show for us. We are showing the M2 to the world for the first time. And you guys actually are the first one in the door. So uh, um, that's, uh, that's a good start. Uh, this is uh, our latest and greatest. We've been working on an M series now for uh, three, four years since the M Pro, where we start working with carbon fiber, uh, creating enclosure that is uh, uh, unparalleled in its performance uh, when it comes to uh, stiffness, dampness, noise ratio. Uh, the company who builds uh, these enclosures for us, they build nuclear submarine out of uh, uh, these uh, structures. So they know that it needs to be quiet. So it's uh, um, really the ideal structure for um, uh, the skins on uh, a loudspeaker, which in this particular case has a so-called aluminum frame that holds the drivers uh, and then uh, the entire back apparatus, back waves of the drivers is embodied in the carbon enclosure. It creates a very, very quiet uh, um, uh, enclosure with uh, extremely low uh, noise ratio, which allows you to hear more into the music. And when you get to that level of details, you start hearing the harmonic structure of the instruments and that's where the warmth comes with the, the detail. So it's not just uh, exaggerated highs which can uh, create the false sense of uh, transparency. This is real transparency to the source. You get to hear more what's on the recording.
Welcome. My name is Irv Gross. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Constellation Audio and I also represent our sister company, Continuum Audio Labs, which is the turntable manufacturer. We're very happy to welcome our friends from Alcom and very excited to have you on board as our distributor in Russia. I'll begin by telling you a little bit about Constellation Audio, who we are, where we come from, and what we're going to be listening to today. We started about uh, 10 years ago, okay? And we started with the idea that in this industry, there's a lot of great designers, but designers are typically known for one thing. Like some people are known for preamps, and some people are known for digital side, and some people are known for design work. And we decided if we could capture some of this great intellectual property and some of this great intellectual talent and put them all together, it would be a good thing. And so a lot of these people are stars, if you will, in their own right. But if you look at a group of stars that are together, they can form a unique constellation. And so the name Constellation Audio was born. And we continue to add new talent around the world as we grow our product line. But what's really important is the brand Constellation Audio. And when we began in this industry, in order to make a statement, you really need to go big. And so we began with what is now called our Hercules and our Altair. The Hercules is a big kilowatt amplifier that weighs 100 kilos per amplifier. It is, if not the finest, it is certainly among the finest amplifiers in the world with a matching preamp and phono stage. And as great as that amplifier is and as great as that preamplifier is, we know that in order to grow our business and to, for you to grow your business, we need to have a much more diverse line. So over the last 10 years, we have increased so that we now have four series of product. At the top is the reference series, and it consists of the Altair 2 preamplifier, the Orion Phono Stage, and the Hercules amplifiers. Step below that is our performance series. Then we have our Revelation series, which is what we're listening to here today, and our most affordable series of product, which I believe Alcom has, is the Inspiration series. And the Inspiration series is a great way to start because it has all of the DNA of Constellation Audio at a most affordable price point. One of the things that we're known for is our amplifiers and all of our amplifiers are available in either stereo or mono configuration. There are lots of benefits for mono amplifiers, uh, not the least of which is you get double the power and you get greater separation. The particular system that we're listening to today, this is from our Revelation series and in many ways it provides the greatest value because it uses the same casework as our Inspiration series, yet it borrows much of the performance from the Performance series. So for example, if we look at the Revelation series Taurus amplifiers, which is what we're using today, they use the exact same casework as the Inspiration amplifiers, but they're uh, a little longer so that we can add a second transformer and more output, so you get better bass and more output. If we look at the preamplifier, this is the Pictor preamplifier. It is exactly the same as the Inspiration preamplifier, which is right there, right next to uh, where Lev is. The difference is with the Pictor, we now have a separate power supply. Okay, benefit of a separate power supply, noise is an enemy in an audio system. So by separating the power supply, you're able to reduce noise. One of the things that we have always used in our reference series and our performance series is the separate power supplies and also the ability to add a DC filter. What the DC filter does, it goes between the power supply and the source component and acts to further lower the noise. So this is part of the revelation series. Uh, in the Inspiration series we also have an integrated amplifier which we have in the performance series as well. 
So that's where we are right now. In the future, we're going to continue to grow our business. And on the back wall behind you, you'll see a product that will be coming out later this year or so. Uh, it's called Leo. It's a lifestyle product that will allow you to stream from your phone using Apple, uh, Apple AirPlay, Google Chromecast. But what's also cool about that, Leo, is that it's got a separate preamp section in it. And the preamp section will be switchable between a line stage and a phono stage. So you could take a turntable and plug it in. You could take uh, an output from a TV and use it as a center channel. It's a wonderful lifestyle piece. You could add two of them and have stereo speakers. So this is the direction that Constellation Audio is growing in the future. Шоу 2019 Мюнхен совместно с Заваленко Рекордс демонстрируем в том числе свой продукт Загиня Джерри ХС4, которые в Москве на Хайн Шоу в общем-то получили очень положительные отзывы вот. и здесь посетители тоже ну, отмечают интересное звучание этих систем ну собственно вот решили познакомиться с зарубежной аудитории и показать свой продукт, ну пусть даже вот такой маленький. Самое основное, что нас просили сделать наше фирменное звучание в небольших габаритах, потому что не у всех людей есть возможность, скажем, поставить на напольную систему. Задача была попасть в невысокую ценовую категорию со своим звуком. Ну, именно с нашим фирменным звучанием. Она сделана на пассивном радиаторе. У нее очень высокочувствительный твиттер, который пришлось э, придушить. Но это не просто сделать. Если его просто придушить, мы потеряем микродинамику. То есть у нас ушел год на то, чтобы э, сделать подходящий для этого твиттера э, фильтр. 
я считаю, нам это удалось. Решение казалось очень простым, но на него ушел год. Динамические головки для нас делает э, Сканспик заказывал. То есть это серия Revolator, но она адаптированная под нас. Вот. Э, пассивные радиаторы тоже этой же серии, их вообще не существует в природе. Они тоже делаются под нас. И именно пассивный радиатор позволяет нам из этой серии получить ну, вот их фирменизм. Колонка, в принципе, для ее габарита достаточно весомая по весу. То есть она весит 1,5 кг. Многие, кто ее берут, так... Ее внутренний объем, на самом деле, достаточно маленький. Потому что толщина передней и задней стенки вместе с компаундной панелями получается 43 мм. Боковые там, и верхние 25 Плюс ко всему в ней используются такие серьезные платы кроссоверов. Большие катушки на воздушных сердечниках, то есть э, хорошие большие э, пленочные конденсаторы. Судя по тому, как люди реагируют, как, э, с какой скоростью они сейчас покупаются даже по предзаказу, ну, я считаю, что продукт получился хороший. Впервые в истории били холидой в магнитной ленте. Uh, привет, my name is uh, Dirk Reke from Transmotor. Uh, we are here at the Transmotor booth at the Munich High End Show and I will give you a little uh, view around our booth here. So, uh, first one, this is the newest prototype we made, still nameless yet, shamefully. Uh, we wanted to make a classic Transmotor design technically but in an elegant shape again. Many people ask us to do something uh, without too many parts and uh, this shape has a dust cover attached to it. Um, it's very heavy and solid, so inside we have three motors, solid aluminum base with cutouts, adjustable feeds and all the typical transporter ingredients like the magnetic bearing and uh, adjustable feed and everything like that. Flagship model, Transporter Metropolis. Uh, special about this, we have the cadenic suspension, as you see here. The whole turntable is completely independent from the floor and can move freely. Uh, independent from resonances from the floor when you walk around and from listening to music everything FMD bearing which means that the motor has no contact to the platter at all so it's just via magnetic force the platter is driven. Uh, next one Transporter Alto is called special about this we have the adjustable tone arm base in height you can adjust the VTA on the fly while the turntable is playing so you can adjust the VTA not only by looking from the side but also by sound or using a measurement record now the classic the Massimo still solid base solid aluminum base over uh, 50 kilogram the whole system two motors thick platter adjustable tone arm base for every tone arm that's on the market in every direction so, another classic transporter tubulio uh, again with that free magnetic drive where you drive this part and then you have only magnets connecting to the uh, to the main bearing of the platter. You can use three tone arms, comes with a special power supply uh, and uh, rack for it if you want. 
something that's new for us for the show. You know, Transmoto exists for many years now, over 47 years. So we decided to show some of the classic Transmoters. So many people remember this one from the 70s, Transmoto AC, which was it was very new then to have a turntable completely made of acrylics. So one is the looks and also uh, the acoustic abilities are very good for sound dampening and vibration dampening. So Transmotor classic, also classic Transmotor design. And uh, this shape we have here, uh, we also see that again in the newest turntable we made. Uh, with the, the dust cover and the classic plinth. <laughs> Our entry level model, this is the Transmotor Max. Uh, it's called entry level model, but it's really a high end level uh, turntable. This can have uh, two two tone arms. Uh, they can have 9 inch or 12 inch or anything in between. You could use different power supplies, different angle upgrades, splatter rate. So it's a proper transmoter, but in our assortment it's uh, at the entry level. Also, the first really big turntable we made the Artus. See here? <laughs> this was the first one that had the Cadenic. Suspension. As the Metropolis, you can see it can move freely in every direction. Transfer to Jupiter. And uh, this is. Um, also, the classic transmotor ingredient special about this is you can have uh, many upgrades for it. You can have the uh, TMD bearing, you can have a second plate for it, you have several designs of tone arm bases, different power supplies as usual. So we like that customers can start with a simple design, don't spend too much money and then upgrade it over the years until they have a proper high-end transmotor. Leonardo, classic design, classic transmotor machine. This is called the Dark Star, a little bit atypical for a transmotor, so in matte black, not shiny, but uh, acoustically it's a very nice material. It's called Delrin and it's very good for dampening vibrations. Transmotor Rondino with REC. This is our entry in the free magnetic drive world. Well, you want to say it that way? Uh, where this, um, I explained that earlier, where you don't, don't have contact between motor and platter. And another classic, the Transmotor Fat Bob, on the market now for 12, 12 years, I think now. So, uh, very well known, many people like it for the solid base, solid aluminum base, very heavy, the whole system. Uh, great speed and uh, many people say it's the rock machine from Transporter. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm Michael Creek, uh, Creek Audio um, uh, Managing Director and uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. So what about your new product? It's not in series production yet. We are hoping in the next uh, three months to do that. Uh, at the moment this is the, the final uh, sample before production. Um, the silver version is here and the, the black one up here. Th this is different from the one you saw in Bristol because we've made it uh, three, three centimeters deeper front to back because we um, made some uh, mechanical changes to it to stiffen the control so you can spin it it feels very luxurious as a, as a mechanical uh, construction compared with a, a simpler one where it, it can flex because the shaft is made of plastic um, that was one of the one of the changes the other change was to make the case work out of two millimeter steel not one and a half millimeter so it's heavier it's stronger it feel, it's better damped so it doesn't have any rattles or high frequency resonance I think it's about five kilos and, and the, the front panel is a 12 millimeter thick aluminium mm -hmm. um, and if you add the weight of the heat sink in the amplifier it's quite a lot already so at the moment it's two products but we're working on the third one which is a lower powered amplifier mm -hmm. so the lower powered amplifier in the same size uh, case will be uh, class AB um, uh, mode uh, so it will get hotter and then the bigger amplifier we chose to use the same class G mm -hmm. mode that we use in the Evo 100 so it can produce more power without getting as hot. So that, that's the, the lineup at the moment. Well, the 75 watt lower powered one, it's, it's fo following on from the 50A and the 100A. There are two distinct levels, but we sell equal numbers of them. So our, our experience of doing that tells us there is a need for a lower power, lower price, and a higher power, higher price product. This, this module is um, with a FM radio mm -hmm. as well. But demand for FM radio is getting smaller now, all over Europe uh, and the rest of the world. The, the amplifiers have the capability to plug in a phono preamp if, if required. The, the loudspeaker has been designed by my son Luke, who uh, you may have seen at the show in Bristol. And uh, we have three proposed models, a, a stand mount, two-way design, a floor standing three-way design with um, 170 millimeter uh, woofers, two, two woofers, and um, a bigger uh, flagship model which has been developed to produce extremely low bass at high power if required. And that, that had two larger woofers, uh, 200 millimeter woofers.
Hi, my name is Kevin Kelly and I'm the uh, Managing Director of Atlas Cables. Uh, we're here to introduce three new streaming cables from Atlas today. The first is the Equator. This is an OFC cable with a solid polyethylene dielectric. Its bandwidth is about 250 megahertz. It's based on a CAT6 type design. So a, a lead, an entry level point uh, product available now. We have another new product. Uh, which is uh, from our Hyper range and again this is a fully screened solid core um, uh, streaming cable it's a solid core foam poly polyethylene dielectric product and its bandwidth is around 500 megahertz so twice the, twice the bandwidth of this so in terms of audio this cable here Hyper produces a, a more accurate or natural sound. One of the unique features about Atlas is this unique grounding system that we apply to our analog cables. And we've applied this successfully to our new Mavros streaming cable. And the Mavros streaming cable is again based on a CAT7 design. It's a solid core, foam polyethylene dielectric with a 600 megahertz bandwidth. So if you're in the market for the best streaming cable, then Mavros is a product to go for. Following on from the, uh, the streaming cables, uh, we have an entry level power cable here. And this is the EOS power cable. It's a two square millimeter design, and it, but it has a, a very efficient graphite loaded screen, which keeps your noise down within your hi-fi system. Also within here, we have the Atlas Unique dual drain system which is a two additional conductors within the cable which are used to terminate onto ground to keep the cable as quiet as possible so an entry level cable but offering fantastic performance EOS and lastly from the opposite end of the spectrum we've talked about streaming cables talked about power but we'd like to introduce the Mavros Tone Arm Cable. This is a OCC conductor with a polyethylene dielectric. It's got the uh, dual drain system and it, it fin finalizes our range of the uh, high end uh, Tone Arm and Turntable cables. Available from next month, the retail price in the UK will roughly be about 500 pounds. We've talked about the new Mavros and one other thing that's unique to all Mavros customers is the ability to customize the cable to their exact specification. And this is a space this is a product called Lux. So you can take your Mavros and you can have it available in any of these luxury finishes. These are leather finishes. So you can choose the color, you can choose the stitch style, and they produce a delight factor for your customer. Um, allowing you to offer the best products available in the market. So best audio and video performance and best cosmetic performance available. So they're available here in, uh, this is a uh, Brogue leather colour, this is a sea green colour. And of course we have products in Daytona Red. So. If you're looking for something special for your customer, then Atlas Lux certainly needs it. Thanks. Hello, I'm Stavros Danos from Arisirat. Uh, welcome to our room. Uh, this year we have uh, Siphonia speakers presenting. Um, this here is paired with Erebuses, our new Bascon uh, series. Uh, they're driven with uh, our latest instead of the R flagship amplifiers. The six chase is uh, Achilles. Um, our preamp is the Trust Impera 2, a showcase of our inverted trio technology. Uh, sources this year we have both analog and digital. Starting from digital, we have the Cassandra 2 signature, which is uh, the midline Cassandra series uh, model. It's fed by a pink phone, uh, two chassis, 
uh, server running files from hard disk. Uh, in digital, we have the Taro signature, another debut um, in this show. It's the, again the midline phone stage was developed uh, after we developed the LMA edition uh, Talos. We got uh, some technology developed from the top model uh, and we have uh, introduced it to the midline level. It's fed from a top wing uh, Red Sparrow cartridge installed in a re Porsche turntable from Portugal. Um, cabling is from Signal Projects and uh, the equipment is, uh, is supported by Stagore platforms from Holland. Yeah. 
anything in her heart. You're not planning on hanging around. People would go on their different ways. I left you. I'm Stuart McNeilis, the CEO of SME. I'd like to introduce you to our um, model lineup here for Munich 2019. Starting with our new entry model, the Model 12A. Launched here for the first time and seen for the first time here at Munich 2019. The 12A takes over from our very famous Model 10. 12A takes the design styling from Synergy. Synergy was a concept launched last year, which was an all-in-one vinyl solution. New for 2019, we've taken the phono stage out, the cartridge out, and we've got a mechanical version of, of Synergy. It's available in three colours, so the SME traditional black, dark blue and dark grey. SME Model 15. The Model 15 was launched in 2015 and is SME's best-selling and most popular turntable worldwide. The Model 15 has um, a um, suspended suspension with isolation, and comes equipped with the famous SME 309 tone arm. It's available in standard black, which is um, our best selling line, but we do a special variant, which is um, chrome detailing. So this is the SME Model 15 Special Chrome Edition. You can see we've put some extra detailing there from the platter to the fleet, the suspension, special chrome clamp, and of course a chrome detail tone arm. It has mechanically all the same features as the standard 15. This enhancement of the chrome finish has become very, very popular, particularly across Europe and uh, the Asia and the Middle East. SME Synergy was a product launched at Munich 2018 last year. This is an all-in-one vinyl solution. At SME, we've done a lot of market research and we decided to manufacture a precision-made turntable, fully equipped, with a phono stage which is made by Nagra, a matched cartridge by Autophon with crystal cable packaged in a precision made turntable. The design features of Synergy is a, a new model for SME. It took SME out of the traditional, um, the traditional structured chassis, sub chassis and mounting structures into a more rounded design with a one-piece power supply unit. The power supply unit is one single billet of metal machined out to house the electronic speed control. For the SME top-line turntables now, I can introduce you to the Model 20 and the Model 30. This is, of course, a huge step up from the existing lineup that I've just demonstrated. Both the Model 20 and the Model 30 has suspended suspension with hydraulic dampening in each four corner of mounting pots. They come with the range topping tone arm and a much heavier mass in terms of the chassis construction. The Model 30 comes in two forms, the 33 and the 3012. The 3012 being our ultimate range topping turntable. So to introduce you to our Garrard 301, it's a revival product from Garrard. SME acquired the Garrard brand last year, 2018. And part of our um, Garrard Revival program, we've introduced, and it's the first time seen here at Munich 2019, the Garrard 301 package. It comes in a solid walnut plinth, which has some SME um, engineering know-how incorporated, an isolation system into the feet, the top deck, and the tone arm base. The 301 is an absolute, genuine, original Garrard 301 turntable, which has been meticulously rebuilt by Garrard. We've retained all of the original features, the specifications for the electro and mechanical aspects of the turntable. What we have done at Garrard, we've introduced some cosmetic changes. So in terms of the paint finish, um, the 301 was introduced by Garrard 1956 and it ran through to 1964. And of course, back then it was oil-based paints and the oil-based paint gave a particular textured finish. We wanted to recreate that, but with a modern paint system. So we have an acrylic two-pack oven bake system and we've um, managed to achieve the exact peel effect that was achieved by the original garrods in the 50s and the 60s. In terms of, um, in terms of the package, it becomes complete with an SME M212R tone arm. So it's a plinth turntable tone arm 
no variation from that. It's a limited number, um, highly exclusive product, which is going to be available worldwide, but in very, very low volumes. Концепции old school, корпуса, 
таком традиционном виде, традиционная компоновка динамиков. Большая колонка, которая раньше называлась монитор .1, она теперь называется On Air. Вы видите, изменился цвет передней панели, это лак под металл. Аксессуары Cold Ray, они, в общем, все в таком виде, как мы были раньше, наверное, вы уже их видели в стажах прошлых репортажей. Единственное, появилась 90-сантиметровая стойка под акустические системы в отбавке Естественно, она доступна во всех наших отделках, которые мы выпускаем серийно и также, возможно, кастом-версии. В модельном ряде ICE мы представляем новинку, универсальная колонка 6C, которая, ее предназначение в большом кинозале быть каналом Atmos, потолочным, а в помещениях среднего объема и небольших помещениях это может быть универсальной колонкой, то есть выступать как центральная, фронтальная группа и как сураунд колонки, сделана на базе 6-дюймового коэксиального динамика с компрессионным рупором, то есть развивает очень большое звуковое давление и звучит прекрасно. То есть мы ее в Москве уже включаем, приходите в шоу-рум Аудиомани и послушайте. Из новинок по модельному ряду Айс принципиальных изменений никаких нет, добавились некоторые такие удобные, так скажем, детали. Это ручка для сабвуферов. Раньше это была просто прорезь. Не всегда было удобно переносить. Сабвуферы тяжелые. Сейчас мы используем вот такие красивые ручки. Мы показываем модель 8.2. Она уже давно известна, но сейчас в ней используется новый динамик с фазовыравнивающей пулей. Она же является теплоотводом для катушки. Show. 
we have a couple of new stuff here at our show. We also uh, have showing some uh, older products, which we still think is very, very uh, welcome in the traditional high-end uh, stores. We uh, start over here, where we have um, our new soundbar, which we call the Catch One. Um, it's a design product with uh, a very good sound. It has a connectivity with an HDMI cable. It has a digital and analog input. As you can see here, it comes in a white color with a gray grill, but it also comes in just white and also in black. Inside this room, we have a little area we call the, the, the man cave, which is a nice area where we can sit and relax. In here, we have uh, our newest product uh, within CI products. And that's an in-ceiling product hanging up here. It's called the uh, Dali Phantom E60S. The S means uh, that it has two tweeters, so that can be used as a stereo speaker. Just this one. And uh, it's built on a Dali Phantom E60, which is already in our range. Here it comes as an E60S with two tweeters. The retail price for this one will be 279 euro. We continue further down. Over here, we are looking at the brand new Oberon range from Dali. It contains of uh, six different models in four different finishes. We have uh, the uh, Dali Oberon Unwall, and then we have the, the Dali Oberon 1, Oberon 3, the Oberon 5, the Oberon 7. And here in the middle, the Oberon Vocal, which is the center speaker used for 5.1 system. We are at the show demoing our Dali Oberon 7. Here playing on a NAD M10, which is a very nice uh, setup. In the other side of the room, we have our Dali Epicon 6. The Dali Epicon is um, a high-end speaker from Dali, our most high-end. That's the speaker we showed here at high-end for the first time seven years ago and it's still an audiophile product from Dali again as any other product from Dali it's a product who combines design with a very high sound quality an ice cream castle and feather canyons everywhere looked at clouds that were
My name is Lothar Riemann. I'm the head of development at T plus A Electroacoustic. Um, in our company we have 11 development engineers and we develop everything from mechanics, hardware electronics and uh, the software for our devices in our uh, company and uh, the T plus A devices are then built in Germany um, and uh, our production and development is up to a very high standard I think. We have some new products, we have a new power amplifier with digital inputs and a very high quality D2A converter. Uh, this device is called PA1100E. Uh, it's a 2x250 watt amplifier um, having I think 6 analog and uh, about 10 digital inputs and you can connect any digital source from computers over Blu-ray players uh, up to televisions to this amplifier and uh, so you can use it for every digital device or analog device which you have in your system. We always produced uh, very good electronics but about 10 years ago we made the decision to build bigger products. Uh, up to that time, let me say, our amplifiers were limited to something like 200 watts, but then we decided to build real big amplifiers going up to 2 kilowatts, if you like, today. And uh, so we made a step upward in, uh, yeah, in, 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 in exclusive and, and very high-end electronics. But um, <coughs> the uh, whole engineering has always been on a very high level at T-Plus-A. The bigger the amplifier, the more stable the power supply is, the more um, stable is your whole sound reproduction, even at low levels. And when building big amplifiers, it's sometimes difficult. Um, many of these big amplifiers do not sound very good if you listen at low levels. Um, they are very strong and if you listen loud they are also very dynamic but at low levels they often uh, are not so good in, in reproducing fine details and they are not so lively and <clears throat> the real art is to build an amplifier which can deliver high power but which is also at low levels very dynamic, very detailed, and this is something which we try to achieve with our HV amplifiers. HV stands for high voltage, mm -hmm. and in our amplifiers we use very high uh, rail or operating voltages going up to 700 volts. This is way much more than any other amplifier on the market uses, but the reason why we do it is if you operate transistors at a higher voltage, they work more linear. And um, <clears throat> this better linearity means that you don't have to use feedback to make your amplifier work correctly. And no feedback amplifiers always sound very natural, very lively, and uh, this is what we achieved with our HV electronic series not only high power but also very high quality and even the finest details are reproduced by these big amplifiers perfectly. T plus A has a very long tradition in building tube amplifiers. We do that since 40 years now and uh, we like the sound of tubes very much and if you look at tubes and if you look why they sound like tubes, it's, um, to my opinion, very much related to their distortion spectrum. A tube has very much uh, first overtone, the K2 overtone, which makes the sound always very pleasant and, and never harsh. And this is something which we try to achieve in our products, to have uh, a distortion spectrum which is always dominated by the first overtone. And uh, this is something which we also do in our uh, semiconductor amplifiers. So we really try to make them sound like good tube amplifiers and I think this is what, what we have achieved with our high voltage uh, electronics.
there are really a lot of customers who still love to have a CD player because they have a big collection of CDs and they want still to play these CDs. But <clears throat> this depends on the market. For example, in Japan and in Germany, the CD player sales are very strong. <clears throat> and uh, in some other markets, CD players are not so popular anymo anymore. So it really depends on, on the different markets. But T plus A still loves to produce uh, players and we just here presented a very new model, our PDT uh, 3100, which is really a reference CD and SACD player, which plays at, at the highest possible level. And for that player we developed a complete new electronics, new laser pickup system and a new decoder system which is purely optimized for audio reproduction and play CDs and, and SACDs on the highest level. So we still believe in, in CD and SACD players for the next coming years. Electrostatic tweeters perform much better. They have much higher dynamics than normal dome tweeters, for example. These electrostatic tweeters have diaphragms which have almost no moving mass. They are so fast and they can reproduce uh, high frequency signals so well like no other um, loudspeaker chassis can do. And electrostatic tweeters is something which T plus A did from the beginning. So we started our speakers already with uh, electrostatic tweeters and this is something which is very T plus A is very well known for. And uh, in our new solitaire speakers we have these very long, we call them line array speakers. And um, these line array speakers, they have one big advantage. A normal speaker will produce sound and it will radiate it or dissipate it in the horizontal and also in the vertical direction. And the problem is the vertical. Um, transmission of these speakers because um, there are a lot of uh, a lot of energy is reflected at the uh, roof or at the uh, floor and so from one musical impulse you receive at least three um, sound effects at your ears one direct sound one reflected at the floor one at the ceiling and this disturbs imaging for example so instruments cannot be located very well and <clears throat> with our line sources we get a very good dissipation in the horizontal uh, plane what we want to have but in the vertical range they are very directive and so we don't get any problems with roof or, or floor um, reflections and this is a very big advantage of these big line speakers and this is the reason why they are so big <laughs> just to achieve this very special radiation pattern. But um, with these speakers um, you can even listen at a, at a very high distance. So if, even if you are five, six, seven or eight meters away from the loudspeaker, the whole um, the sound stage, it's all very, very stable. And so you don't have this sweet spot. Some speakers only sound right if you sit at one special location in your room. These solitaire speakers doesn't matter where you are. If you are 2 meters or 12 meters from your speakers, they always sound correct. The Kala is a very small product, but it shows what we can do even on a small space. So we have in the Kala, we have all the different sources built in from uh, FM radio, DAB radio, internet radio, you can access all the music services like Cubas, Deezer and Tidal. Um, we have a CD player built in, we have a Bluetooth uh, receiver, um, we have analog and digital inputs, so we have all sources for music combined in one single small device and we put in a very powerful DSP for doing um, uh, let me say digital signal processing on a high level and we have a very powerful amplifier with two times hundred watts so uh, this is a very compact but
very nice and very powerful unit. Germany, of course, is still our main market and uh, Switzerland is very good, also uh, Taiwan. About 60% of our production currently is sold in Germany and uh, about 40% is export. And in Germany we are the biggest manufacturer um, in audio electronics and, uh, well, we are increasing our export share step by step. Um, yeah, and we try to achieve a 50-50, half and half. Munich 2019 to launch Muso second generation uh, which uh, really builds on the success of original Muso uh, and brings it up to date with our new platform. It also distills our partnership with Focal so obviously Name and Focal are owned by the same, same group and our R&D departments have joined forces to, to give us the very best Muso second generation product we can. So they've worked with us on the drive units, for example, using unique Focal technologies to optimise the drive units for second generation, which has given us an enormous
performance uplift compared to version one. So what does second generation bring you that version one did not do? So it brings our new platform and our new platform technology features in our Unity range products and our dedicated Hi-Fi streamers. So that's the ND5XS2, NDX2 and ND555. So all those features that you, you know and love in those products, Chromecast built in, so you can cast audio from your off tablet directly to the unit at high quality. AirPlay 2, out of the box, compatible, allowing you to control it through an Apple Home app if you wish. Spotify Connect as per version one, and Tidal built into our, our native app. We've got an all new user interface as well, so there's much more going on. It's completely redesigned. We've got five presets in the northern hemisphere of the product. Now, not just internet radio stations can be saved as favourites, you can also save Spotify playlists or Tidal playlists as favourites as well, and that's just assigned from the app. We've got a proximity sensor, so when they, you approach the product it lights up and you get more theatre. And we also have uh, a, a room for direct joining multi-room, so if you had one of our streaming products in another room, you simply walk up to the Muso, press the multi-room button and it will draw the music from the other room, so you've got two of those. The new platform also brings us Rune Ready out of the box. We know Rune is a, a, a really popular interface for, for new products, so that's very important to us. And you can see we're displaying Muso second generation with a television. We've now got an HDMI ARC input on the on the Muso 2, so it's a really compelling, not just great for music, but also for, as a sound bar proposition for your television. Muso 2 is a really, really good sound bar on top of being great for playing back music. We've got a redesigned remote control, which is, uh, echoes the design of our Unity remote control. At the heart of the, the, the Muso second generation, we've got a completely new, much faster processor. The processor in here is 13,000 times faster than first generation, which means we've got a much, much better DSP implementation. So we've written our own DSP, um, uh, DSPs within name, that means we've got a lot, lot more control over the base and which drive units is, is uh, how the drive units react to the frequency that they need to deal with. Another subtle difference, which may not be uh, noticeable on, on when you look at it first, we've made a shallower heat sink. So we've actually got another half litre of cabinet volume. So we've got a lot more base depth, essentially the same, same footprint. Um, from within the app we've also got a, an improved room correction, so we've got settings for whether the Muso is close to the wall, far to the wall, or in the corner of the room, and that's all done in the digital domain. Another important point for perhaps dealers in, in, in Russia, it's possible to put the, the second generation in a demo mode. So you don't need to connect it to a network or connect a USB key. When in demo mode, we've got five tracks preloaded within the software and the presets, one, two, three, four, five, will give you great music instantly. So wherever this is on display in any store, you'll get a wonderful music experience. But I'd encourage everyone to go and listen to it. It's a massive performance lift from version one. It really is you know, uh, 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 an incredible feat that our, our research and development guys have, have, have achieved. And I'd encourage you to go and listen to it and store it if you can.
is a sticker yeah. with a chip on board. The chip generates this program to prove that we have an original product. Because there are a lot of products in the market that come from China and the owner does not always know if it's an original product or not an original product. So, with this uh, chip, we, we uh, prove this is an original product. Any cable, like, uh, I think that one, yes. So we have the sticker complete. If you doubt the product, just put your mobile phone on top and you get the message, this is an original product. To prove that we have Western European products and not Chinese made products. Another development is the further development of carbon nanotube. Um, we are now at 550 DTEX what's about five and a half times more material than with the 100 DTEX we have had before. So the uh, quality of transmission is even improving. And I think that's an, uh, certainly an improvement uh, I regard as very essential to have even better sound quality. But the, the carbon nanotube is also um, very useful for medical applications, say for heart connections, for pacemaker to heart, because you cannot break anymore. Normally a pacemaker cable runs for about 5 million beats and needs to be replaced. With this product we have tested up to 15 million, one five, didn't break. So I think for heart patients, ideal uh, connector for pulsing the heart. So that's another step we are working on. And maintain the cable, just make another step up in the sound quality. I think that we have a very well balanced program for the consumer, besides a very big program for the industry. We have at the moment 38 companies buying our products for their own applications, not just the Amazon, but uh, many other companies rely on our products. And we just got an order from a tone arm manufacturer to produce 1200 cables for tone arm connection. Now I'm getting nervous because 1200 is a little bit more than two or three. Eh? So I have to motivate my, uh, my employees to, uh, to produce 1200 uh, cable and they won't have it in a short time. So that, those are the pleasant things in life, uh, but also a little bit complicated. Come il fumo di un sigaro, 
mi ha chiesto se ero stanco di vivere, ho detto ah, sì ma vorrei insistere e con un gemito tornò al posto solito è paziente l'anima è paziente l'anima ci sono belle anime in corpi ridicoli e fotomodelle con anime orribili e fanghiglia d'anima dentro molti politici è nascosta l'anima I'm the owner of Ion Audio and we are at the Munich Show 2019 yeah? and I would like to show you a new product, um, the Spirit 5. After nine year production of the Spirit 3, we introduce the Model 5, a new driver stage, new volume control system, yeah? new knobs, new output transformer. Uh, also on the rear we have uh, some adjusting for for tamping, yeah. And this uh, model will be shortly introduced after the mini show. We have single-ended amplifier, a new coming crossfire evolution. We produce the 62B uh, since the 20 years by ourselves in Czech Republic. It's a 30 watt output power, 5 ampere output current, and the evolution have a very special driver stage. Fully single ended and triad, of course. Also, a new volume control system, a new, new knob style, completely new design, output transformers, three power supplies and three draft power uh, transformers. Every channel has uh, two separate chocks, and also on the rear, we have additional feature, feature like a ground binding post and also a toggle switch for adjusting the damping factor. The S5, a network player, actually is a, a little bit downgraded from our top model, the S5. This is the S5 Junior. Yeah? Uh, we downgraded a little bit the output stage, yeah? power supply, uh, and this model has a very interesting price from around 9,000 uh, Euro retail price here. And uh, we have a, a lot of S3 owners around the world, yeah? and many of them uh, are looking for an attractive flagship like the S5 Junior, and it's much more affordable as the big S5. A new loudspeaker for my own is the Black Eagle, yeah? it's a 93 dB sensitivity, yeah? and uh, especially designed also for a single ended. Yeah? It's a three way design with a Ecotone ceramic speaker and also here on the rear on the rear here as we can see that so we have also here a toggle switch uh, for solid state and for tube amplifier it is uh, the cabinet made by instrument uh, uh, playwood fully there is actually uh, no damping material inside and we have a various of finishing uh, and all are made from uh, Vienna lacquer. So here we have the, the new S10, S10 MK2. Yeah. Uh, we introduced here a completely new tuck. Yeah. Uh, also a new streaming module. Uh, we also include like Tidal, Coopers, high-res high audio, uh, Spotify, uh, will be a very shortly room ready, DSD of course, yeah? and also what is very special as an option, uh, customer can select standard version, signature version, with preamp, without preamp, uh, and uh, shortly in summer we will introduce, introduce also uh, a server option, yeah? where the customer can select uh, hard disk, we can include it, yeah, we can see it here very well, uh, and uh, the software, the media server is directly installed uh, from J River.
So this year we're very proud to present the Wharfdale Elysium series. Uh, Elysium is our flagship speaker for Wharfdale now and we're doing two models, the Elysium 4 and the Elysium 2. Uh, Elysium 4 is going to sell for about $8,000 a pair and Elysium 2 is $5,000 a pair with stands. Uh, the concept of this is to take loudspeakers to a new level, really make them so that they, as far as you're concerned, they disappear in the room, you're just left in touch with the musical performance in the room. So we use very advanced drivers. We've worked closely with ScanSpeak in Scandinavia to work on the bass and mid-range drivers and with a high-level designer in America, high-end designer in America, on the Air Motion Transformer. The Air Motion Transformer really gives us a way forward to reproduce high-frequency detail with tremendous precision. So the whole speaker is dedicated to playing the musical performance uh, without getting in the way at all, without any coloration, without any distortion. So it really puts you in touch with the passion and excitement of the music in your home. Uh, and then also from that research that we put into Elysium, um, we have designed a more affordable system, the Evo 4. The Evo 4 consists of a full range including AV products and center channel and surround. Uh, this also uses the air motion transformer um, coming from the design that we did for Elysium. Um, and we think that this is a very, a very affordable method of getting, again, this passion and excitement to the musical performance. The 80th anniversary of Wharfdale, we introduced the Denton, and then we did a revised version for the 85th anniversary, and now we've introduced the Linton, because the success of the Denton showed us that there was a real requirement for the classic sound of Wharfdale to be reproduced in with the latest materials and the latest performance from our drive units. Uh, and Linton, as you can see, is a very classic looking loudspeaker. It's what we call the heritage range of Wharfdale, um, but it offers a really modern, up-to-date sound, but still with the richness and warmth that you expect from classic Wharfdale products. And people here just loved it. For the first time at the Munich show, we have a new speaker, which is the um, Extra, Extra with a K. Uh, this is the first speaker we have designed using a true ribbon tweeter. Uh, the, um, some of our other designs use quasi ribbons, like the Emit or the Air Motion Transformer. But this is the first one using an actual true ribbon. And uh, it's working in the configuration like this, which we've used in several of our other models, such as the Ultimatum XL6 or the Momentum SX5. It has the same basic idea, which is the top section acts as a sealed two-way design. Uh, and that is shelved off from the bottom section 
which houses two downward firing um, base units handling only up to 80 hertz so it's acting essentially as an integral subwoofer but it's also tuned with um, a low Q port so it's ideal for positioning close to the wall so you don't have to have it out into the room too far um, yeah so the extra is um, it's a very uh, sophisticated and subtle presentation but sounding much bigger than the cabinet would suggest which is a kind of hallmark of of a lot of neat loudspeakers. The way we design speakers is, is really an iterative process so some of the ideas as I mentioned from this design are taken from previous designs and changed, modified with different elements such as the ribbon tweeter as opposed to the um, inverted dome tweet we use here on the uh, Momentum 5. Uh, this one is also using um, 134 millimeter main drive units as opposed to the 170 millimeter units which we use in the larger models. So it, it crosses, um, uh, it's a kind of compromise between the, the top of our motive range, which is the motive SX1, which is a floor stander, and then the Momentum 5, which is double the price, but it's the next floor standing up uh, model in the range. <coughs> So the extra fills that gap and it comes in in mid midway between those two price points. But yes, the, the, the designs always, um, we try to, to, to do something different with the next design, but we often use tried and, trest, tried and tested um, ideas and uh, formulas that we know we can make them work. Uh, and the way we make loudspeakers is very much by ear. Um, to, to listen to the, um, the, the the music and let the music shape the way the speaker sounds rather than the other way around. Uh, in my opinion, in our opinion, we find that the tweeter is the most crucial part of, of any speaker because this is what defines the character of the speaker. It's um, it's what gives the, the, the speaker its integrity, it's what you hear. Obviously, the, the um, combination with the mid-range is important, but the, the tweeter, I think, is always, for me, the, the defining characteristic of the speaker. <laughs> so we, all, we like to try, as I mentioned before, lots of different types of tweeter and make them work uh, together with whatever drive unit combination. It might be this 170mm um, or the, this one, 134 or the tiny. tiny unit we use in the IOTA and the IOTA Alpha and of course in this design we use um, an EMIT type uh, isodynamic tweeter which has the characteristics, some characteristics of a ribbon but it's not a, not a, a real ribbon so but we, we these things just give the, the speaker its identity and we make make it over a long period of listening and tuning and voicing and eventually we make it as good as we think we can make it and that's when it signed off. Well it's, it was surprised us, it surprised me because we were, the brief for this speaker was to be a compact serious audio file loudspeaker and we were trying different drive units, different tunings, voicings for a, a period of several months and at one point we made a um, change to the main driver and then a change later to the, the port uh, and suddenly it became much much better than we could have thought it could be and it, it was just <laughs> luck it was fortune really but it also because it, it has that big feel because there is a kind of psychoacoustic trick going on because the speaker doesn't really go down very low but it has um, a, a prominence uh, about 100 hertz, 120 hertz, a gentle prominence which when you hear it you think you're hearing the fundamental but you're hearing the harmonic but it sounds as if you feel as if you're hearing the, the actual bass note. So it's a, it's a bit of a trick but it seems to work so we, yeah it surprised us when we did it. We have, we have dabbled with active loudspeakers in the past but what we do say is that um, our, our crossovers are very simple in design with low loss components so um, 
if you have our speakers uh, with by by wire or by amp terminals or tri amp on certain models, we would prefer to buy amp passively than to get involved with the active side of it because they're designed as passive speakers and to, to actually emulate all the phase inconsistencies that the passive crossover might introduce into an active crossover is quite a difficult process. And you can make a speaker, we, we have done uh, loudspeakers uh, in the past where we've had uh, an electronic crossover tailored for it and through a three-way active system. Uh, and it certainly is very impressive, it's very um, uh, high dynamic contrast and everything, but it isn't. The, it doesn't have the same character. It didn't have the same character as the original version, especially if you buy amp it. So it's it's not something we active, actively pursue. So it's it can be done, but we don't. We don't. It's not in our heart. We we like to prefer to passive buy amp because if you buy amp uh, passively, you get a lot of the benefits that an active system might give you but none of the drawbacks and none of the compromises that an active system might introduce. For instance the, um, the electronic crossover is a very elaborate tone control really so there's a lot of uh, components in the signal path at, at a low signal level so it's probably can be detrimental even though the end result is the, the amplifier driving directly to the speaker, there are compromises further back. Um, and in, in that instance, the bi-amping will circumvent some of that. Uh, and what you gain uh, from, uh, what you gain from the, the bi-amping is, the, the, what you lose from the bi-amping is that you have a component in the signal path after the amplifier but what you gain is you don't have uh, extra componentry in the signal path before it gets to the amplifier. But passive by amping is what we recommend. Well, we had intended this to be uh, a standalone speaker, the extra just being an extra model in the range, as it were. But uh, we've had some thoughts that we might develop a small range from this. It's because it's been extremely well received and. Uh, we think there is potential for making a, a, nice, a very small isobaric compact uh, s uh, stand mount speaker and maybe a slightly smaller version of this in the way that we have the Motive SX1 and the SX2 which is smaller. We'll do a similar thing with this if it sounds good, but we have to make it sound good first. But that, that's the next plan. Uh, we also have some plans for a very um, uh, high-end model. I don't know. I don't really like to use that word high-end, but those words. But it's it's, it's going to be above um, what we currently have on the ultimatum range. It will be a, a step above that. That would be a kind of modular speaker, which you can tune and voice to match the room more precisely. Because obviously every room is different. So it's nice to be able to have some control over certain aspects. Yeah, you, you, you can uh, you can have different crossover filters, slopes, different levels for different sections, different tuning, uh, port tuning. If we're using port tuning, that can be changed. Uh, a variety of variables that hopefully we can um, make it work in any room. Because the room is the speaker designer's biggest enemy. <laughs> Yeah, hello, I'm Ian Murdoch, I'm the International Sales Manager for Quad and we're here at Munich High End 2019 introducing two new products, our PA1 Plus and the new Vena 2 Play. So PA1 Plus is a updated version of last year's VA1 with a little bit of extra power and some new tubes just to give it a cleaner, more uh, concise sound. The big product of the show for Quad this year is this one, the Vena 2 Play. Vena 2 has been in our range for a number of years. It's a 60 watt amplifier uh, with Aptex Bluetooth uh, that forms the heart of any complete system. But this year we're adding into it a new streaming and multi-room capability using the DTS PlayFi chip. With the Vena 2 Play we can stream Spotify, Tidal, Kaboz, Amazon Music, Napster, 
any music platform that you like directly into the unit, out into the speakers. So this now becomes a complete hi-fi system in its own right. Launched in July of 2019, we fully expect this to be one of our most successful products.